welcome everybody we're glad to have you with us uh this afternoon this is the 15th of march of 2023 and i'm don snow and i'm in uh, provo utah and gerhard roof our host is in orem utah and uh, this is the utah valley technology and genealogy group our family history update class which we do once a month usually on the third wednesdays of the month uh, today's topic is what I call snow numbers. Now that's that snow is a surname. It doesn't mean the snow like we're getting around uh, in the mountains uh, now. If you were, uh, if your name is Jackson, you, these would be called Jackson numbers for you, or uh, uh, roof numbers, uh, or, or whatever your person. There, it's a descendant numbering system that I've worked out that our family uh, uses and that's helped in several ways in our family, which we'll talk about. And it's a simple system uh, to use. Uh, down at the bottom, you see the uh, where the notes are online uh, the, that, that have the complete uh, a set of notes that are uh, uh, related to this class. And we'll talk a little bit more about those in a minute. Uh, genealogy numbering systems. People have dreamed up different numbering systems uh, over the years. Uh, most of you are familiar with the standard pedigree charts, uh, which starts with the person uh, uh, to the left, and then there's a, a, a fork, and then a, a dad and a mom, and then each one of those forks, and there's a dad of the dad, and a mom of the dad, and a, a dad of the mom, and a mom of the mom, and so on. Uh, you probably have never thought about the numbering that's on there, but that numbering is such that all of the even numbers are males, they're the dads, and all of the odd numbers are females, they're the moms, except possibly for number one, which could be either, either uh, individual. And so I've indicated that down there on the screen, you'll see where it says N going to 2N and 2N plus one. So if you know a person's number uh, on a pedigree chart, that person's father will be twice that number, and that person's mother will be twice that number plus one. And that, that's a standard uh, way of, uh, of uh, labeling pedigree charts. You, you may not have ever paid attention to it because you don't need, need to see that usually because you see it at a glance as who's the dad, mom, and so on. That's a pedigree numbering. And there have been other pedigree numbering systems that people have come up with. Descendant numberings, however, are a little different because there's more than two possibilities. There's, you could have one child, two child, or 10 children. And so you need a different number than just the, the N going to 2N and so on on it. So people have come up with different descendant numbering systems. And uh, uh, several have been developed in the notes. You'll see details there of, of a couple of ideas. Uh, one method is people use a dot to separate the generations or a dash to separate the generations. So I think the example I put in the notes was a, if you have a 314, 3.1.4, then that would be the, the third child and then the first child of that child and the fourth child of that child and so on. The problem with that system is that uh, after you're about three generations or four generations, the numbers get too long. And so they're hard to keep track of, but they at least show the generations. Um, there have been other descendant numbering ways that people have dreamed up uh, using uh, uh, different sorts of numbers and, and so on. The system that we're going to talk about here is uh, uh, what I call snow numbers, and we'll get to that in, in just a second. But this the numbering of a pedigree chart, uh, to simplify that and to make it smaller, uh, people use, uh, uh, they sometimes write the, the number on a line with the name and the birth date and, and so on. And uh, in, in America, we call those onentoffel charts. Uh, Gerhard tells you that onentoffel in German just means pedigree chart. Uh, but uh, but here, an on and toffle chart is a pedigree chart that's not in a standard format the way you're used to seeing it, but just on a separate line. Each line in order, the uh, the, the the number and then the uh, the individual, the name, and so on. And uh, it saves a lot of paper to do that, but it doesn't show at a glance the relationship, the parent-child relationship, the way uh, a regular pedigree chart uh, does. So we're going to talk about a uh, different uh, system that I've come up with uh, that I call uh, the snow numbers. Now, the class notes, uh, let's take a minute and actually talk about the, the notes themselves. That's the link where they are. Uh, it's on our UVTAGG, which is Utah Valley Technology and Genealogy Group. 
<coughs> the, the initials for that dot org. And uh, if you look on there, you can find it uh, that the, the whole thing is on there uh, as, uh, on the screen now. But uh, if you forget what that is, just go to uvtagg.org and look for resources and you'll come up with a link uh, menu there that says Don Snow's class notes. Now, let me shift to gears here. Let me use the alt tab uh, uh, method here to change and actually get to my class notes uh, if I can find which one they're on. And uh, that wasn't the one. Uh, which one are they on? Uh, I think it's this one. Yeah. Okay. Now, now oh, that's actually the snow numbers. L let me uh, get over here to the, uh, let me, well, first of all, let me make that bigger so that you can even see what it says. Uh, that that's that's the notes that we're going to be looking at here in a minute. But over on this side, this is my uh, Don Snow's class notes page. Now, I from my eyesight, this is easier for me to read. You're not used to looking at a black background. You're used to looking at a black black numbers on a white background. Uh, but I won't take time to change that uh, now. But uh, I've got a setting in here that I can do that uh, on these pages, but I'll just leave it set so that it's, so you're seeing white, or in this case, yellow for the links uh, on, uh, on a black background. So this is my class notes page. And on here, there's, uh, first of all, it's uh, several pages here. And then you scroll down just a little bit and you'll see down here, there's the links for how you watch these classes on Zoom and on Facebook uh, on there. And then there's classes coming up. Now, on the classes coming up, here's the classes that are, there's today's date, and that's a link, uh, the, the one for today, it's, it's item number one uh, on there. <clears throat> if you click on that, that's actually the notes for today. Uh, you'll see on here the schedule for next month. Uh, I'm doing one of these classes per month. Next month, we're going to talk about city directories. And then for, uh, for the month of May, I haven't decided on a topic yet. All the past notes are scheduled. They're all down here. And the, the, both the schedule as well as all the past classes and the links are on here for all those notes. So if you missed a class, all the notes are down there uh, in the past. And the videos, many of them are on, uh, uh, on our YouTube channel as well as uh, some on Facebook for a while. Now, on, if you click on that, uh, the class is coming up on the, the notes for today. It, I've already clicked on it, so it's these. This is the snow numbers uh, descendant numbering system. There's a, an abstract there that tells you what this numbering system does, a little bit about it and so on. Here's the welcome and introduction to the class. And there's a link to, there's my email address. If any of you are watching this six months from now and you want to ask a question, feel free to email me and I may be able to answer it or may not be, but I'll, I'll be glad to try. Uh, and then where the notes are stored uh, online, etc. Uh, a couple of tips on here. Item three is a couple of tips uh, about uh, that uh, seem to be helpful for people. And then item four is the problem for today, how to keep track of descendants of an individual uh, in, a, in a meaningful way. And that's what my snow numbers do. Then there's a section here on genealogy numbering systems. And this is where I discuss a little bit about some of the ways that people have dreamed up to number uh, pedigree charts and descendants charts. And this is where that uh, doubling the number to get the dad and doubling the number, adding one to get the mom. So there's an illustration there. If, if you're looking at person number 12, double that number 24, that's going to be the number for the mom, the dad. And double that number plus one, 25 is going to be the mom. And uh, with, with two, because uh, births require the dad and the mom, that's all you got. But for descendants, where there's more, the one, two, three, four, five kids or 10 kids, you can't use a simple system like that. So there's, there's something here that I've, anyway, I've indicated here a little bit about different numbering systems and uh, the fact that they, the numbers grow large fast. Uh, for uh, for both ancestors as well as descendants. And so it's hard to keep track of something where it may or may not to be uh, meaningful. But uh, descendant numbering systems are, uh, are, the idea is to make it something helpful uh, for you. So here's what the snow numbers are. And this is what we'll look at some illustrations here. The whole section here on snow numbers is uh, the information about it. It's a simple and it's a useful method uh, for numbering descendants. Uh, for a few generations, 
for the, for uh, three or four or five generations. If it's too much more than that, and there, it's not useful uh, uh, anymore. Now, what I've done is I've and, and and here just briefly, here's what the system is. You start with the person. In this case, uh, for snow numbers, I've started with me. I'm person number one. My wife is person number two. Our first child is person number three. Second child, number four. Third child, number five, et cetera. And then as they get married or and, and have kids, the next person chronologically, either to get married or to uh, be born uh, or adopted into the family, uh, is then it gets the next no number. And I'm going to show you in a, a minute uh, how we keep track of that on, we use the, uh, the program in our family, we've been using Ancestral Quest uh, for a program to keep track of, of all of the people uh, that are there. And uh, we're up to our snow numbers now, starting with me, we're up to number 90, I think it's 90, uh, 96. And this summer we'll have a couple of more, so that'll be up to about 98. So by next year we should be into the into over 100. I'll, I'll show you a sample of that on uh, on ancestral quest here in just a second. That's the basic idea of the numbering system. It's 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 nothing fancy. It's just very simple. Start with the person uh, that you want, and the spouse of that person is the, is number two. The first child is number three, the second child is number four, and on down the line uh, from there. Uh, now you can do that by hand. It's not hard to do it by hand and just keep track of all the stuff, but it does require that you get uh, what I call the family entry dates. Uh, that, that is the, when that person entered the family. That would be a birth date or an adopted date uh, or a, a marriage date. And uh, uh, and so a list of those dates is what you need if, if to make sure that you get the get everybody accounted for. And we keep that up in our, our files in our ancestral quest. We've got a column that shows what those are. Uh, <clears throat> let me let me uh, get into the ancestral quest file right now and show you what they look what it looks like. Let's see if I do an, an alt. Let's see, I should be able to get to. Let's see, a, a Windows D should get me to my, there's this. Okay, and now my Ancestral Quest file is right there. And uh, I clicked on it. Here's Ancestral Quest. Okay, now now what this is, I don't know whether you can see this, and I can't, well, maybe, well, let's see, what does that say? I don't want to check this out. Um, so I'm going to say uh, no action. So I'm, and I don't want to see more stuff from, Okay, now, oh gosh, and that's their, their latest news because I, there, okay. Now, now I will turn on the magnifier so that you can see this. Uh, let's see, uh, a Windows Plus turns on my magnifier. There, there the magnifier is on. Okay, now, now you don't see the whole screen. All you see is the, the piece of it here. This is the program Ancestral Quest. You can do this with any program where you can get a column uh, with the information on it. Now, in this case, what I'm showing here, this is the, uh, the, the, the list, the, the name list. You click on that word right there where it says name list. And uh, it, there's, I'm showing the record index number, the REN here. Then, then there's the, uh, uh, the tag one, uh, which is, uh, we put a, a uh, we we used to use another column in here, but they took that column out of Ancestral Quest and it fouled up our system. Uh, so now we had to get a workaround. Uh, we put it, we call it a tag, and then we got the another column over here with with the names, and then here's an event date. Well, I, I've got the sex in here of the person, and then an event date. And so you begin to see some of these event dates. They're not uh, they're not, or some of the the events in there. Now. This starts with, now notice that there's the first snow number, snow number one, that's me, Donald Ray Snow. My wife, Diane Manwaring, is snow number two. Uh, and uh, our first child, Donald Ray Snow Jr., is number three. And then number four is Linda, um, or Linda Snow Westover now, and so on, on down the line. These go on down, If I'm just going to scroll down, and this the magnifier is on here, so you can, you can, uh, see most of it. Uh, I'm just uh, rolling the down the wheel down here. These are all the people that are my descendants 
there. Uh, this is up to snow number 20 something or another, 24 there. Uh, there's 23, et cetera. I'm rolling these on down. All these are the, the kids, the grandkids, great grandkids as they married in or as they uh, uh, were born and the event date. The other column that we used to have access to in Ancestral Quest, we had the data, the uh, family entry date in there. And we'd write that in international date format. That is year, 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 four, four digits for the year. And then two dash, two digits for the month and two digits for the day. And then they all sorted alphabetically when you clicked at the, at the top, when you click up here and, and sort, it would, the program would sort those all alphabetically. And so once they were, the an alphabetical sorting is then chronological uh, with the date written in that format. And so uh, once they were all in there, then it was easy to just go through and say, oh, this is snow number one, this is two, three, four, five, and six, and to fill them all in. Uh, as I scroll down here to the bottom, I'll show you what we're up to now. Uh, let's see, we're up to 96, 90, what have we got there? What's the last one? 90, snow number 96. That's the last one. That was, oh, that's, that's, uh, yeah, oh, that's, Hol that's Holland. Uh, Holland Nicole uh, Westover, uh, the, down in Mesa, Arizona. That's a uh, great granddaughter just born uh, just a few months ago. And so uh, that's the latest one. So by the end, by next year sometime, we'll be up into the over 100. Now I've indicated in the notes there that if you've got fewer than, than 10 descendants, then you don't need two digits. You don't need a leading zero. But if you go over 10, and for most of the time we've been over 10, so we've, we've used a leading digit, zero, one, 0, 2, 0, 3, up to 0, 9, and then 10 to make it sort right. Because uh, some programs will sort correctly no matter whether you have leading zeros or not, but other programs, and most of the programs I found now don't sort correctly unless you have that leading zero. And so since we're going up over 100 numbers in the, within the next year, we changed these all just last week in preparation for this class, changed them all to three digits uh, so that there's a zero in front so that they'll also all uh, sort uh, correctly. <clears throat> and the other column that we had, we could use for uh, the, if, the data entry, uh, the family entry date, which would then sort in order, and then these would, would, would sort immediately uh, with them. Uh, the, I, I tried to set up in Ancestral Quest a separate uh, column to do that, but I can't get it to sort right. And so uh, we had to do this workaround uh, on the thing. Anyway, that that's the example of it. Now let's go back to the uh, back to my notes here and see. Did I get back to the notes? Oh, now let me turn the magnifier off so that it doesn't confuse you. Uh, all that's explained in here in these snow numbers uh, with the information uh, about it and about the problems that we had with Ancestral Quest. Uh, if you use a different program, Roots Magic, for example, or Legacy, or Path. Well, let's see. I don't know whether is, I don't know whether Path has a the old version of PATH, which they haven't updated now in what, 10 or 15 years. I don't know whether there's a version, a, a, a column that you can use for that. Maybe there is. Uh, you could always use the old uh, ancestral file number column. Uh, that, because that used to sort, you could use that to sort uh, in order. But uh, Ancestral Quest does have a single column, a single date uh, entry thing that does special numbers, or I've forgotten what they called it, but that's what we're using now to indicate the snow number. But we were using another column that we could uh, organize them with to, to figure out what the snow numbers were. Now, there's several different things that you can do with this. This is all explained here in, in the notes uh, on it. And, and when we first did this, we first set this up, um, oh, it's been 10 or, well, 15, more than 15 years ago uh, in a reunion. Uh, we were up to only, I think, about number 40 or something then. Uh, we gave everybody a badge that uh, uh, my wife was still alive in those days. We, we had a badge that had the, the person's name on it, snow number such and such, and ribbons hanging down from it and so on. And then uh, we wrote a verse about them, uh, about that person, 
and uh, their number and uh, read that all off at a family reunion and gave them their badge as we did that. It turned out to be just a remarkable experience and everybody just really remembers, they, they talked about it. Uh, many of the kids still remember their snow numbers. Uh, I've uh, uh, got a couple of friends that are bus drivers down in St. George and we had a reunion down there in St. George a while back. And one of the bus drivers, uh, I was introducing some of the kids to the bus driver because I happened to know who it was. And I said, this is no number three and four. I hear number seven and eight. And, and, the, and the, the bus driver later on asked the kids, he saw him a year later, he said, what's your snow number? <laughs> and, and the kids actually remembered it. Uh, what, what we found is that it gives the, the, all the people a feeling that they're part of something bigger than just their own family. They're part of a group uh, uh, that they, they feel at home in that group. And with reunions, we, uh, uh, we, we, we use the numbers and we have, at, we have a reunion every summer, uh, with as many kids as can get there. We had, uh, I think it was 87 people at our reunion in Bear Lake last year. And, uh, a couple of years ago we had in Moab, we're going back to Moab this summer. Uh, one of the things that, uh, uh we did at one of the reunions was we had a, a 5k run for anybody that wanted to uh most of us didn't the older ones didn't but the younger ones did and uh, uh the fellow in charge of it made up badges uh, uh, uh a uh, uh on an eight and a half by 11 sheet uh printed a picture of uh, arches monument there and their names no number such and such and their name on the on the front of the uh the thing and then pinned it onto their t-shirt uh, for them for entry into the uh, into the 5k uh, and it turned out to be just just kind of fun to see uh, uh, what people did but it does give the people uh, all the family members a feeling that they're part of something bigger than just their own family and that it makes a difference as to who they belong to and uh, uh, some of you may remember that study that was done down at Emory University I suppose it's been 20 years ago uh, where they discovered that the best indicator of mental health for uh, for teenagers was if they knew something about their own family, their their dads and their moms, and uh, uh, where they were from, and uh, how they fit into the picture. That uh, family relationships were the best indicator of mental health uh, for young people, and and I'm convinced the older I've gotten that families are where it's at and uh, that uh, that the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints with their emphasis on families is is exactly going in the right direction uh, anyway there's there's more that you can do on here uh indicated on this uh uh as well and then there's some conclusions down here uh at the bottom now how's our time has anybody got a what so let me see if i can get my uh yeah we're we're almost we're right done. at three thirty, Don, but yeah. we started late. Good. Okay. Let me see if I can get back to Alt Tab and get back to our. Was this it? No, that wasn't it. Uh, this is it. There. Okay, that was the class notes, and then we did these demos. This is what we demoed: the the snow numbers, and. Uh, I, using the ancestral quest and i showed you the ancestral quest file uh, you noticed that i hid the dates and the, so on so you saw the names but you didn't see any more details on there uh, and then uh, the benefits and limitations you see if you get too many after a while if i'd started this with somebody like erastus snow the numbers would be up in the thousands and uh, and they begin to be meaningless when you get that large but for just a few generations like in your own family it's it's a great uh, way to, to to keep your own family together or maybe start with your grandparents or whatever now i should have mentioned in there and i did mention in the notes if one of my kids wants to start um and and like kevin and linda westover if they want to start with uh with kevin as number one they call these westover numbers the entry date for the family would not change the number would change. The Westover number would be different than the Snow number, but the entry date when they either were born or married would stay the same. 
And so that column that once you fill that in with that, what I call the family entry date, either a birth or an adoption or a marriage, that date is fixed for that person. And so uh, if you want to change the uh, people, once you get it done for one group, it's easy to switch to another group just by showing the descendants of that other group and starting with the sorting them uh, in that uh, in uh, their alphabetical uh, uh, order uh, to do it. So just as a general summary, we've talked about genealogy numbering the on a TOEFL chart as well as descend, that's ancestors and descendants. And then we talked about the snow numbers that we've used in our family that's helped for descendants. And then uh, we've talked a little bit of a discussion about uh, what's going on. Now we've got a couple of minutes here. Do any of you have questions or comments that you'd like to ask or raise? And if so, just unmute your mic and ask away. And if you're watching this on Facebook, you can put the, the question on the comments and get hard low forward to Is there a reason to have any comments or questions yet from online, Don? Okay. All right. Good. Well, it's a simple enough system that there, there probably aren't very many questions at all. The only question is, do you want to try it at all? And you may there, be able to experiment. There are a couple that have unmuted themselves, Don. Oh, Lynn, oh okay. Don, questions or Vickers comments? and Carolee. All right. Yeah, this is Lynn Snow. I just wondered why you did the spreadsheet in Ancestral Quest rather than just doing it on the Google Drive or somewhere else. Well, because we had the data already in there. Oh, okay. That Ancestral right. Quest file is available. They have a collaboration feature that my two daughters here in Utah and my daughter, the, the mission president's down in Ecuador, and me all have access to. So we can all get to that file to okay. update it. And okay. that was the only reason for using it. Uh, you could you could do this with a just a, a standard spreadsheet and type it in and just keep it updated. You don't yeah, need anything fancy. You could do it on a Google Drive doc, and then you could do it on Google Drive docs. You could do it well. Google uh, Google's got that. What do they call it? Uh, what's it called? Is it called? Uh, what do they call that? That Google uh, spreadsheet? Uh, not Calc, but well, there's a name for it. It's 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 not a doc. The doc is the is the word processor. You could use the word processor for it. You could put in a table on a word processor if you wanted to. But we just have all the data uh, with all the stuff in in this ancestral file, which uh, which we can get to. Other kids can get to it. So yeah. we discovered when my wife died that because she was using this and two of our daughters had access to it. They knew exactly what she had been working on on Ancestral Quest. And, uh, and they said, Dad, you got to get your file on there too after she died. And we discovered that, that, you know, that I, had, I had the complete file for the family. She had all the ancestors and the, the temple work stuff. And so we've been using this because they have that free thing that's built into it that you can have other people collaborate with you on it. And uh, only one person can work on that file at a time, check it out, check it back in, and then everybody has access to the corrections. Oh. Uh, did somebody else have a question or a comment? Well, we've got plans for a family reunion. <laughs> uh, what about family reunions? Well, this, you just gave us some ideas for a family reunion. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. And you don't need to do anything fancy, but uh, but we 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 wrote a little two line verse when we did this the first time, and I think we'll do this this summer. We'll uh, maybe update that because it's been ten or fifteen years since we did it. Uh, we've kept the, the updated the numbers, but we haven't done a presentation like we did before. Anything else, Carolee? Did you have a comment? I see your mic is unmuted. Um. Actually, I was just thinking of, of how to do that. This is such a great idea, but uh, I'm, I'm not quite understanding how you would. Um, do, can you just sign up for Ancestral Quest or is that a paid, paid site? Yeah, yeah. The Ancestral Quest is a commercial program. Galen Finley writes it. He, he's one that works with us on our UV tag group frequently. He used to teach classes on it regularly here. And it costs around, I don't know, 
25 bucks, something like that. And uh, then you enter your data and it will, it will convert the data from an old path program or JEDCOM or anything into it. And then it will allow you to, uh, to sort and run different things. All the pro roots magic would do the same. Legacy would do this. All these will do the same sort of thing. It's just that we use it in ancestral quest because it has this collaboration feature. And we realized how important that was for us and our family. Uh, when my wife died and, and uh, the kids wanted to know what she was, had been working on. So we've just stayed with that. That's the only reason. That, that is very interesting. You, when the people that are marry into the family, you just put them, plug them in at, at the time. It's not according to age or anything, just the, the time they got into the family. Is that it? Yeah, yeah, right. According to the, the, the date they entered, if they were born into the family, then, then it's their birth date. If they were adopted in, then it's their adopted date into the family. If they were married into the family, then it's their marriage date. Good. Okay. So, but Thank it's not their you. age, but uh, it's just their, their, I call it their, their family entry date, the, the date they entered the family. That's good. I'll, uh, that's a good project. Anyway, it's just an idea. It may help you. Or hopefully you can get part, even if you don't use the whole idea, just use part of it and it may help. Then you're very green. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. Thanks. Okay. Any, any other questions or comments? Okay. Nothing well, else online. All right. Wonderful. Well, I appreciate you being with us today. Uh, next time we meet, we'll be in, uh, let's see, this is March. We'll be the middle of April, and that'll be on city directories, and the link is online now. There's an older set of notes. The last time I taught that class was two years ago, and so I need to update those notes. But that's their online linked on there now. And that'll be on, I've forgotten the 17th, whatever the date is in, in, in April. And this class uh, will be recorded. Gerhard's recorded it. It's on Facebook and it'll be on YouTube uh, so that you can watch it later if you want to rewatch parts of it or get ideas. And the notes are online at that uh, link that's there at the bottom of the page that we've talked about before. Thanks for watching, everybody. Appreciate you being with us. And we'll see you next time.